Well, hello and welcome everyone. I hope you are all keeping well. Uh, this video is going to be a slightly longer one this time, I think, because basically what it is, is it's going to be um, a kind of a remake of a video that I did about a year ago. And that was focused all around the top 10 features of 3D Vista. Now, since that video was recorded, there have been quite a lot of new features released. So I wanted to cover some of those for you, as well as some of the main features that I feel benefit myself, but also can benefit my clients as well, hence your clients if you choose to get the software. Um, and when I do go through the new features, uh, what I will do is I will pop a little bit of text here, uh, just so you know that it is a new feature that's available in the software. And uh, before we get going, as many of you also know, uh, if you do watch this and you decide to get 3D Vista, if you purchase it through the link in, that I'll pop in the description below, you will actually get free access to my three hour video training course. I've got almost 200 uh, students, members of the training uh, to date and the feedback so far has been absolutely incredible. So thank you to everyone that's, uh, that's invested in that training course so far. So um, yeah, without further ado, let's crack on with number one. So the first thing that I wanted to go through uh, is not so much a feature of 3D Vista, it's more a, a benefit of the software. And that is the, the user interface and the ease of use overall with it. Now, uh, 3D Vista can get complicated if you want it to get complicated, or it can be as, 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 easy, as easy as you want it to be. Um, which I think is a really, really great thing because it kind of grows with you. Uh, the, the layout of the software is absolutely fantastic. And you've got nice you know, clear buttons, you've got hover effects. So when you, if you're not sure what something does, in a lot of cases, if you hover over it, it will explain to you exactly what it will do. Um, and I think overall, because there are so many different choices out there of virtual tour software, and some really, really great choices as well. What made me choose 3D Vista um, was the fact that I could literally pick it up, uh, open the software, and kind of know step by step exactly where to go. Uh, where I started to need a little bit of help uh, was when you get into the more advanced things like creating skins and creating sub menus and adding you know, embedded videos and links and all this sort of stuff. Um, so, you know, that comes with time, uh, but, you know, as with any piece of advanced software, there is a learning curve. However, I think what 3D Vista does is it makes using the software a joy, uh, which is important because if you're sitting in front of a computer for, you know, two, three, four hours, sometimes a whole day, <laughs> in some of my cases, uh, editing a tour, um, you want the software to be, um, you know, to be enjoyable to use. So, so yeah, I think the, the, you know, the ease of use and the user interface is, is very important. So without further ado, let's move on to the next one. So the next thing that I wanted to cover was all about skins with 3D Vista. Now, what skins are, are basically the overlay that goes over your 360 image within the virtual tour. So the great thing is, is that you can put whatever you like on, on a skin. Uh, they are incredibly customizable, but one of the great things for beginners uh, or even people that are, are using the software or have been using the software for years is that 3D Vista actually provide a whole library of pre-made skins that are already there for you to use. And you can edit these skins, so you don't have to keep them looking exactly the same as they've designed. You, you can change the fonts, you can change the text color, you can change background colors, uh, all sorts of different things. But the fact that they're there uh, really is a massive, massive help. Um, you know, the customization of it is another huge, huge, huge benefit, you know, especially if you are creating a, a skin from scratch. Uh, that can take quite a bit of time. Um, however, what you can also do is you can save skins. So if you have opened up one of the pre-made 3D Vista ones uh, and you spent hours and hours and hours, you know, customizing it to either a particular industry like hotels or restaurants or what, schools, whatever it may be, uh, or real estate, then, you know, you can save that skin 
And then when you come to do the next tour for that industry, literally just open it up, load it, and then uh, Bob's your uncle, it's there, you know. So which is, a, which is a really, really nice feature to have. Um, also, one of the new features that they've just released, which I think is, is really, really good, is um, they've added the ability to include the notch at the top of mobile phones, probably more specifically iPhones, because um, I think previously, in fact, I, to be honest, I didn't even notice this before. I think the notch was kind of blacked out at the top, so it kind of makes it a bit of a more of a sort of a, a full, full screen immersive, you know, effect, which is quite nice. Um, so, yeah, I mean, the skins, as I say, you know, they can be as complicated or as advanced as you want them to be. Um, and, you know, what we can do is, is just, you know, have a look later on at a few of the things that you can, you can put into those. But, um, but yeah, I think having that level of customization is incredibly important to make your virtual tour business stand out. Right, here we go, new feature alert. <laughs> this is a big, big one. Um, and the 3D Vista community have been waiting a long, long, long time um, for this to happen. Um, but, you know, again, another thing, another thumbs up to 3D Vista, you know, when they release a new update, they don't just do it in halves, you know, they make sure that pretty much, you know, that everything is, everything is covered, it's fully beta tested. Um, and yeah, what that feature is, is the ability to add projected text, images and videos within your tour. Um, previously, when you're adding hotspots uh, into a 3D Vista tour, you had to do it in a kind of a, a flat sort of equi-rectangular view, so you couldn't add it in a 360 view. Um, that was a bit of a bugbear for me, because what it meant is you had to zoom into the image kind of to around, about, around the point that you think um, the hotspot's gonna be, so you can check the size and all that sort of stuff, but then when you preview the tour, it just it would look a bit too big or a bit too small. Uh, but now um, you can edit uh, and add hotspots in a 360 view, which is absolutely brilliant. Um, but more so than that, what I was doing previously, if I wanted to add text over a door or um, put, I don't know, a photo in a, in, in a photo frame, like okay, sometimes, you know, when I'm shooting hotels or, you know, real estate rooms that have been staged or things like that, you know, people put these photo frames on there, but there's no photo in the frame. So <laughs> you end up having to go into Affinity Photo or Photoshop or whatever, um, and then you have to add the image into the frame, but you can actually do that in 3D Vista now, uh, which is absolutely amazing. Uh, so not only can you do that with images, um, you can do it with the text as well, as I just mentioned. So if you wanted to put a room name over a door or any text onto the wall, just to you know, let people know about something, uh, you can do that so it's projected and it looks like it's stuck onto the wall itself. Um, you can do the same with video. Um, you've been able to do this technically for some time now, um, you know, basically putting videos into TV screens. Um, but the, with this new update, what you can do now is you can put the video into the TV screen whilst, and then you can preview, preview the video live in the hotspot editor. So, uh, you know, that's just an absolutely incredible feature and a huge time saver. And uh, the same goes with a, with a web frame. You can add a web frame into the tour. So if you wanted to put an example website onto a computer screen that's on show or even a TV screen, you know, if you wanted to have the, a restaurant's website um, on a TV screen uh, within the restaurant, then yes, you can, you can do that. So. Uh, yeah, huge, huge, huge feature updates from 3D Vista team. So if you guys are watching, thank you so much. Um, I know that there's going to be some very, very happy people out there. So, uh, so yeah, let's move on to the next one. So the next new feature <laughs> that I wanted to cover, uh, to be honest, is something that I haven't tried out a massive amount recently, um, but it's tagging. Now, Tags give you the ability to basically name groups of items within the tour. So say for example, you wanted multiple hotspots to show up uh, or disappear in one go. Say for example, if you were doing um, you know, information spots or something like that, you could tag each of those information spots with a name. 
um, like menus or something like that. And then you can set a command to basically hide that tag or show that tag. Uh, it's also a very, very good way of organizing everything within the tour. So if you have got, uh, if you're doing a massive, massive tour for a hotel or whatever it may be, you could tag all the bedrooms with bedroom. Um, and then you could bring all of the bedroom shots up in one go just by searching for them. And the, 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 the possibilities are huge with tags. Um, but as I say, I've been really, really busy recently shooting tons and tons of virtual tours myself. So I haven't had a huge chance um, to go through it all. Um, but you know, once you, you know, use the software, and just again, as a reminder, you are able to download a trial of 3D Vista on their website, just ensure that you go to the desktop version, not the mobile version. Uh, and then you can download a trial uh, and try out the software for, for yourself. Obviously everything's very heavily watermarked, um, but it's definitely, definitely worth a go. And then when you're ready, get in touch with me and then we can, uh, we can sort out the training for you. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I think tags is, is, is a huge, huge, huge potential. And again, a, a, just another feature just to make that whole workflow much, much easier. Uh, for 3D Vista users. The next feature that I wanted to cover is text-to-speech. Now, this is a feature that I have kind of overlooked in the past a little bit, um, but you know, I've been thinking recently about some potential use cases for text-to-speech, and I think potentially it could be a very, very powerful tool. Um, I mean, obviously, text-to-speech is inherently designed for people who are visually impaired. Uh, so first of all, that's a, that's a great, great way of using it. Um, but also, uh, I was speaking to a, a school recently and, you know, they said, oh, wouldn't it be really amazing if we could, you know, create a virtual tour, especially within the library. Um, and then, you know, you could open up excerpts of a book and you could actually have, you know, a short story, um, within the virtual tour. So you open it up and then you click on a button and it reads out the story to you. And I mean, the text -to speech engine does sound quite robotic, but you know, it does an incredibly good job and you can change the pitch of the voice. You can change the speed of the voice. So if you're doing it for a child, you might want to slow it down a little bit. Um, but that's, uh, you know, one use case that you could use it for. Uh, and that kind of made me think, crikey, you know, there must be tons and tons of other ways that you could use the, you know, the text to speech functions. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I think that's a, a really, really nice feature to have within the software. So let's move on to the next feature. So the next thing that I want to discuss is hotspots. Um, now, hotspots are a massive, massive part of 3D Vista. In fact, any, any virtual tour software, to be honest. Uh, but I think where 3D Vista Excel is, again, similar to the skin side of things, is they've got tons and tons and tons of pre-made hotspots that you can use. Uh, they've got normal ones uh, like doors and information symbols and you know, social media icons and all sorts of things. Um, but also they've got animated hotspots as well, um, which are great. I mean, I wouldn't use them too much because it can be slightly crazy on the eyes if you use too many animated hotspots, but um, they can work really, really well. The other great thing is that you can import your own hotspots as well. So, for example, I did a virtual tour of a vets uh, quite a long time ago now, uh, but they wanted to have, or I recommended to them that they maybe had paw prints uh, to navigate to, uh, you know, each of the panoramas within the tour. Uh, the great thing with that is I just went onto a website, the PNG tree or something like that, and just downloaded a, a white PNG icon of a paw print and then imported that into 3D Vista. And then from there, you can actually save that uh, sort of icon or hotspot within the 3D Vista library. So that saves you from having to go every time you want to add the hotspot, sort of opening up your file browser, finding the PNG that you've downloaded and then opening it and putting it into the tool. So again, another you know, huge time saving uh, feature there. And the other thing uh, that they've just recently introduced, new feature, uh, is the ability to lock hotspots, which is absolutely amazing. Now, what that means is that previously you've been, say for example, you were, you were editing the hotspots within a tour and you wanted to adjust the size of, of something that was slightly overlaying another hotspot, you'd sort of accidentally, you know, sort of 
drag the wrong one and it would go out of place and you'd have to put it back in place again and everything like that. Uh, with locking a hotspot, you just click a little pa the padlock button uh, and then that locks that hotspot into the tool so you can't, you can't move it around, um, which is really, really, really handy feature. Just, again, just makes the editing process you know, much, much quicker and much, much easier for you. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I think hotspots is something that will really, really help users of 3D Vista and you know, just help them to create nice tours that look unique, uh, which is what we all want. So, uh, so yeah, let's move on. The next thing that I wanted to cover is to do with actions. Uh, now, this is actually more important than the hotspots because without actions, hotspots would be useless. Um, what the actions are is basically what happens when you click on a hotspot, okay? Uh, this opens up a world of possibilities with 3D Vista, um, simply because you can do so much. Um, there's tons and tons and tons of different things you can do. You can set it so when someone clicks on a hotspot, something happens. When someone hovers over a hotspot, something happens. Uh, when they roll out with their mouse of a hotspot, something will happen. Uh, it just, the, the, the list is endless. Um, but the actions that they offer are huge. Uh, it would take me ages to go through every single one of them. Um, but again, I just implore people to try the software out, just download that trial, um, have a look at the actions that are available, uh, click around, have some fun with it, and, uh, and see what they can do. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I think one of the most impressive ones, and to be honest, I haven't tried it out a massive amount because I'm not too good with, with coding and stuff, but the JavaScript side, so you can actually um, add JavaScript in, so it can execute a JavaScript command, and that just, you know, you can just, you know, the world's your oyster with that. So, um, so yeah, the actions underneath hotspots are not to be overlooked and are definitely one of the most powerful, powerful features of 3D Vista. The next feature that I wanted to cover is the e-learning tool. Now, I didn't cover this in my last top 10 video because I don't actually think it was released when I did that one. Um, but the e-learning tool is incredible. I mean, I, th I haven't seen another virtual tour software provider that, that, that offers this feature. Um, and what it does is it basically gives people, the, or developers, virtual tour creators, the ability to kind of uh, gamify uh, virtual tours. So that could be done on uh, an education basis. So it could be done like sort of a training tour for staff, uh, or induction tour for staff, or you can even create games with it, which, is, uh, which can be good fun to do. Um, but from a, a business perspective, uh, you know, offering the learning uh, function to um, you know, the medical profession or education uh, is absolutely huge. And the amount of things, again, you can do with this e-learning function is, is massive. Um, one thing that you do need to be sure of, and this wouldn't come from your side, it would more be the client side, is that they would have to have an LMS in place, uh, something like Moodle, um, it's basically a, a learning management system. So that runs on a SCORM um, compliance thing, um, without getting too technical. Uh, what it basically does is that the client won't be able to pull through the results of someone doing an e-learning quiz or test uh, without it plugging into an LMS like Moodle or something like that. So you would need to ensure that they have that. Most big business businesses will have that in place already. Um, but once they've got that, you know, what will happen is that they would, uh, you know, the new member of staff, for example, would log into the LMS. Uh, they'd open up the training tool from there. Um, and then all of the results and data, the answers that, you know, the questions that they've answered, um, I think even, even down to things, you know, how many times they've got things wrong, would all pull through, pull through back to that LMS system for them. Um, and yeah, I mean, if that's not a powerful feature, I, I don't know what is. <laughs> Next is uh, skins. Again, just touching on the skin side of things. I wanted to do this section separately though, um, because Again, I think it's something from looking at a lot of people's tours in the past is slightly overlooked sometimes. Um, some people may be a bit scared of using it, um, but I wouldn't be. 
And what that is, is the dual skin feature. Uh, so what you're able to do with 3D Vista is create one skin for desktop users and then another skin for mobile phone users within the same tour. Uh, so instead of it being uh, sort of all responsive, you know, where you have to put things in blocks, so this block goes under that block for a mobile phone and everything like that, um, the skin for a mobile phone is completely separate to the skin for the desktop which is, again, fantastic. Um, very, very great for, for uh, company branding and, and just making the user experience nicer. Uh, the other thing that it does is it prevents you from having to use, and again, I'm not an advocate of this personally, I don't like it, um, but one of the things you can do in 3D Vista is you can force the mobile, mobile orientation. So when someone's viewing a tour upright with their mobile phone, um, it will say, please rotate your device, and you rotate the device into the landscape, and then you can view the tour from there. But the problem with that is it, you kind of get less screen real estate to play with um, because you've got the address bar and everything at the top, and it's just a smaller screen um, height-wise. So being able to view the tour in portrait uh, is much better, uh, but one thing you do need to do is you would, if, if you're viewing a desktop skin on a mobile phone, obviously everything's going to be squished together and bunched together and it's not going to look very good. Um, so with the mobile skin, you can, you know, you can completely change the way pop-ups look. So instead of the pop-up being landscape, so the image on the left and the text on the right, for example, uh, you can change that to portrait. So the image is at the top and the text is at the bottom, which looks much, much, much better. Uh, on a mobile phone. So um, you are also able to preview, uh, you know, how it's going to look on different mobile devices uh, within the tour. Um, and, you know, I just think that having this functionality available uh, really, really, again, will, will help you stand out from the crowd. Uh, it will make your tours look nice and professional, easy to navigate. Um, and yeah, it's a welcome addition to great software. The next thing to go through is uh, animated panoramas and sp the split viewer sp or split screen um, as you can do with 3D Vista now. I've been using this for a couple of my different clients for some time now uh, and what it basically does is there's two options. You can either have kind of a um, almost like a time lapse sort of transition between panoramas so uh, you know before, middle and after. Uh, I've used it for um, kitchen design companies in the past. So what I'd do is I'd go take a 360 of the kitchen when it was completely derelict um, and then go back, I basically just measure where I put my tripod as exactly as possible. So what I do there is basically get a piece of string, dangle it from the center column of the tripod so it hits the floor with a little weight on the bottom of it um, and then measure from where that weight is to each wall um, so I know exactly where to put the tripod when I go back. And, and then take an after photo as well. Then what you can do is you can transition from before to after uh, within a 360 image. But the other thing you can do is you can also do it as a split screen. So, um, you know, users can go onto the 360 image and on the left side, they'll see the before and on the right side, they'll see the after and they can drag the middle. Um, if you choose that function, you can either have it fixed or you can drag the middle. So you drag across to see the after and then the other way to see the before, yeah, that sort of way. Um, but again, that's a, that's a very, very, very powerful feature. Um, you know, even more so for things like, you know, construction companies. Uh, so having all these features within the software, I think just enables people to open up to a lot of different industries to provide them with virtual tours. So, uh, so yeah, I hope you like that one. Now we move on to one of the most powerful uh, recent features. It's not a brand new feature, it's been out for a while. Um, I'll do that anyway. <laughs> um, but it's basically live guided tours. Okay, now uh, again, you know, there are other software companies that do provide this feature and I think it's absolutely fantastic. Uh, I was really, really pleased when 3D Vista introduced live guided tours uh, and what it does is it basically opens up the ability for clients to have a video call within the tour. Okay, so really, really, really powerful for real estate agents, 
Um, also, you know, anyone who wants to be able to show someone around uh, a, a venue or business, again, construction, it can be very, very powerful for construction. So if you went and did some 360 tours, uh, 360 images on a construction site, um, then the foreman and all the other, build, you, know, you know, builders and everyone um, could, uh, could jump on a call and have a look around the site and um, plan things. So, um, so yeah, having that functionality available is, is really, really good. Uh, obviously, users have quite a lot of control. You know, as the presenter, you can give control over to the person that's viewing the tour so they can have a look around it, or you can prevent them from moving around the tour and show them around yourself. Um, you can mute members within the, within the uh, virtual tour um, video call. I think from, from what I've seen, you can have quite a lot of people on a, on a call, uh, sort of a, a video call at the same time. I think I saw some the other day that had about 30 or 40 or so people um, on the call. Uh, but I think that would come down to, uh, I think it's your hosting uh, or the client's hosting um, and how much that can actually uh, sort of manage. So um, the other thing that you do need to be aware of with live guided tours is the, uh, the fact that sometimes people will have difficulty connecting to the tour. Um, so they actually have a, a feature that you can pay monthly for, uh, which puts kind of like a, I think it's almost works in the way of like a kind of a firewall. Um, so it's, it sort of diverts that firewall and allows people to actually be able to connect to the tour, to the uh, live guided tour. Uh, I've had a couple of clients try this out recently that work for a big, uh, a big group. Um, without that functionality activated, they, they weren't able to use it. And then, and then I added it on and, um, and it, was, uh, it was available to use. So that feature is called the, the, the turn service. So it's worth sort of looking into that. Maybe if you are looking to use the live guided tour functionality as one of the main features, uh, and you will have to pay a monthly payment for that. Um, but you know, I've got a couple of clients that use it, and I, I just I just pass that cost onto uh, onto them. So um, so yeah, definitely definitely one of the most powerful features of 3D Vista. Another great feature, but this is going to be quite a quick one, I think, um, is the ability to preview your virtual tours in a browser. Um, so what you can do is you can click on preview within 3D Vista to preview your tour. Uh, and that will open up as default in the 3D Vista viewer. Um, but then that's not sort of adaptable. You can't, check, you can't sort of change it to a mobile phone view. Um, so within the preferences, you can actually set it as a default to open up in your browser, um, which I have set. So it just, it just means that once I've opened it up in Chrome, I use, which I think a lot of people use. Um, once you've got the tool opened up in Chrome, um, you can open up the, the developer tools, uh, and then just refresh it, just do an F5, uh, and then you can view it with different mobile devices and how the tool is going to look on different mobile phones before you publish it, which is, uh, which is a really, really handy thing to do. And it goes back to just making sure that you know, you've got that mobile skin designed properly. Um, you know, because all mobile phone screens are different, you know, different resolutions, different sizes. Um, but with the Google developer, developer tools, you can, you know, you can preview the tour in different phone screen sizes and just make, make sure that everything is going to fit uh, properly on there. So, uh, so yeah, that's a really, really nice functionality to have. Floor plans uh, are pretty important within virtual tours, I think. Uh, it depends what industry you're working in. I mean, they are essential if you're working in real estate. Um, and the 3D Vista floor plan tool is very, very, very powerful. Uh, you, you aren't, you're not able to make floor plans within 3D Vista. I think they did used to offer some software to do floor plans, but I don't think it's available anymore. Um, however, I personally use a company called Magic Plan, uh, who are absolutely fantastic, especially if you've got one of the newer iPhones with LiDAR on it. Um, all you need to do is literally just move your phone around in the room and it just scans the whole room for you and puts the floor plan together, which is, which is genius. Um, but once you've got your floor plan together, uh, you can either import it again as a PNG so people can see through it, um, or you can just do a you know, solid white background with the you know, black walls and text and everything on there. Um, but the other thing you can do with 3D Vista is you can actually uh, put radars on there. So you can actually add hotspots into the certain areas um, of where the shot was taken in each room and then add a radar on there to, to show people exactly which direction they're facing in. 
Um, and they, these floor plans can be added as a skin element, so people can actually collapse and um, you know open and collapse the floor plan as and when they want to. It doesn't have to always be on there. Uh, so you know, yeah, having the the floor plan feature on there is great, and you can also add different floors as well if you want to. So you can add um, above the the floor plan on the skin, you can add a drop down menu, and within that menu, you can choose it to show um, the different floor plans. So you know, you know, lower ground floor ground floor, first floor, second floor, that sort of thing. So, uh, so yeah, it's a, it's a really, really nice feature. Right, we are almost, almost there. <laughs> um, the last two things that I wanted to cover aren't really sort of functions and features of the, of the, uh, of the software itself. Um, next thing I wanted to cover is more about the support and, and what 3D Vista offer you as a company. Um, their support overall over the past five years has been absolutely astonishing. It's been really, really, really good. The only problem when I found it to be a little bit slow was when the COVID-19 pandemic hit. Um, and the reason for that is that I think they, you know, they were short of staff. I mean, a lot of industries around the whole world um, struggled with, with supporting. Um, so that's through no fault of their own whatsoever. Um, but the support side of things, I cannot fault at all. Um, that also goes on to the, you know, the update side of things as well. Uh, the amount of work that the team put in there with updates is nothing short of astonishing. Um, if you open the software you know, every week or so, two weeks, there's always just a little update in there just to tweak something. Uh, people are able to report. If someone reports an issue within the software, they'll always put in there, reported by so-and-so, just to thank them. Um, I think that's a really, really nice thing to do. And, and over the past few months, I've seen a few people commenting and getting slightly confused uh, with the whole update procedure uh, within 3D Vista. There's two different types of updates. There's technical updates, and then there's feature updates, like major feature updates. Um, when you purchase 3D Vista, you get your updates included for a whole year. Uh, after that year, if you, you will still carry on getting all the support updates, you know, the necessary ones, you know, to keep the software running smoothly and properly. Um, but for major updates, uh, you do need to pay a fee, uh, which is, I think it's about 149 euros um, every year. You don't have, I mean, you don't have to pay it. If you don't want to get the new updates, then that's absolutely fine. I mean, you may be able to do your tours without these new features, um, so if, say for example, um, a new feature comes out and you look at it and go, well, I don't really need that. Uh, you don't have to pay the money. You just keep using the software. Um, and then if a new feature does come out, you go, oh, okay, yeah, I'd really like to have that. You pay the 149 and not only will you get that feature, you'll get all the features that lead it up, you know, led up to that new one coming out that you wanted. So, you know, I think that's only fair. Um, you know, the, the, the team there work very, very, very hard um, to create a software that we know and love. So I think it only right that, you know, they get rewarded for that financially. So, you know, I thought I'd just, you know, mention that because I have had quite a lot of messages from people asking me, you know, whether the updates are all included. And I've heard that um, you stop getting updates after a year completely, which is completely wrong. So, uh, so yeah, you know, I hope that's cleared that up for you. And now we move on to the final part. Okay, last but not least, hope you're still with me. If you are, thanks for hanging around. <laughs> um, I just wanted to talk about the cost of 3D Vista, okay? Because again, I've been an ambassador for 3D Vista for four years now. And you can imagine I get a lot of emails and a lot of messages from people, uh, especially because I used to offer a discount on 3D Vista. Uh, I don't offer a discount anymore because that's now stopped. Uh, so I get a lot of emails about that. Uh, but as mentioned, you know, instead of doing the discount, what I do now is I do the um, access to my training course. And when people buy through the link, which is below in the description, um, you know, if you want to buy the software, then you'll get my training course completely free. And, but the, on the cost side of things, you know, 499 is the cost of, of 3D Vista, which on face value can seem very expensive. I kind of bolted a little bit at the price when I first saw it. But then I looked at some alternatives and I knew I was going to be in the virtual tour game for, well, hope, hopefully quite a long time. 
Um, and I knew that the first job that I, I, I had booked in to do a virtual tour was going to pay me about £250 or so. Um, so I thought, hang on, two of those jobs, and it's paid for itself, uh, which, is, which is true. And then I don't have any monthly payments to worry about whatsoever, uh, you know, moving forwards in the future. And so, yeah, I mean, I think the value side of things, yes, it can seem expensive, you know, when you, when you sort of, um, when you see the price in black and white, or, you know, on the, when you're about to buy it. But, you know, you need to remember that, you, you know, that's a one-off cost. You know, you will have that software that you purchase there and then forever for that price. Yes, again, as mentioned previously, if you want to have new, new updates, you may have to pay a little bit um, just for, just for the, the, the major updates that they do. But, uh, you know, I think as value goes, uh, the only other cost you're going to have is the hosting cost. Um, now, 3D Vista do offer their own hosting. Um, if you're doing small, sort of a small amount of tours to start off with and you do get three months worth of hosting free when you sign up with them, um, uh, that's the same as going through my link as well. That will give you the opportunity to try out their hosting. And if you're doing a small amount of tours to start with, then it might be worth using it. Um, but I think it's 99 euros for a gigabyte of storage. So if you're, especially if you're using a bigger camera, like a DSLR or mirrorless camera, and you're adding lots of videos into your tours, that gigabyte can go very, very fast. Um, so what I personally do is I use my own hosting and um, I basically host all of my virtual tours under my website domain. Uh, so I've got hosting with a company called 20i. I've got a video that I've done on hosting on YouTube. So I'll link that up in the corner here, I think. Hopefully, hopefully I got the right side. Um, uh, so yeah, uh, I would recommend, you know, if you're going to be doing quite a lot of tours or detailed tours, looking into using your own hosting. Uh, I mean, I think I only pay about nine quid a month or nine pounds a month. Um, no, sorry, fifteen pounds a month because I've, I've upgraded mine now, um, and that includes my website hosting as well. So you know, quids in. It's absolutely brilliant. So yeah, um, I hope that has answered a lot of questions. Hope you've enjoyed seeing what Three D Vista can do for you. And again, if you're still here, uh, I really appreciate you watching the whole video. Uh, if you do have any questions at all, then please feel free to comment below or send me an email. Uh, again, the link to my website, the 3D Vista section of my website is in the description below, so you can contact me through that. And yeah, thank you so much for your time, and I wish you all the best. Take care, bye.